What's up everyone? Today I'm showing you five books you can read to improve your writing. All of these books have really helped me so I hope that they're useful to you as well. And I've also included the links to these books on Amazon in the description box below so that you can order them. Let's get started. This first book is Dreyer's English, An Utterly Correct Guide to Clarity and Style by Benjamin Dreyer, who is the copy chief of the publisher Random House. This book is an updated guide on style and grammar. Because it was published in 2019, it is really up to date and it's adapted for our modern language. It answered a lot of the questions that I personally had. For example, I've always wondered if the grammar rules I was taught in school are outdated. Some of these rules include never end a sentence with a preposition, never split an infinitive, and what the author tells us is that these rules are in place for a reason, but it's actually okay to break them every now and then for the sake of clarity. And he gives us examples in which it's okay to break these rules. He also tells us how to avoid common errors, including danglers, and answers really specific questions that you might not have thought of before. For example, would you say, if I were to do this, or if I was. So if you read the book, the author will answer that question for you. He also tells us how to use this comma, semicolon, colon, and apostrophe. It's really easy to mix up all of these different forms of punctuation. And he also tells us whether or not we should use the series comma or the Oxford comma, and that's the comma that comes right after the second to last term in a list of items. For example, the comma I've circled right here is an example of a series comma, and he staunchly defends putting in this comma. It's really up to you whether or not you use it. My favorite quote from this book is that when the author says, only godless savages is to the series comma, I personally agree with the author. I also use this comma. You should read the book to find out why this comma is beneficial in many cases. My favorite section is the trimmables in which the author gives us examples of common phrases that we often use that are really repetitive. Some of these phrases include added bonus, all time record, blend together, end result. And the words that I've italicized here are not needed at all. This book is pretty famous. You might know about it if you are interested in creative writing, and it is Stephen King's On Writing, A Memoir of the Craft. This book is part memoir and reflection, part style guide, and it includes advice for writers in all stages of their journeys. So I personally loved this book as someone who enjoys doing creative writing. So it's definitely useful for you if you're interested in doing fiction, poetry, anything like that. It answered a couple of questions, including how Stephen King himself, the master of horror and suspense, develops a character or storyline. So he actually gives us examples of how he developed the characters of Annie Wilkes in the book Misery and Johnny Smith in The Dead Zone. He also tells us how he personally integrates symbolism into his stories. And I love this book because he, the author gives us a glimpse into his own process. And a lot of us tend to ask the question, you know, do authors actually intend to include specific symbols in their stories or does it just happen? But he tells us how certain symbols, such as the symbol of blood as a representation of sacrifice, maturity, and family ties in the book Carrie, tend to come, come about intentionally. He tells us how to write description and dialogue and gives us advice on what we need in our toolboxes to write effectively, including vocabulary, grammar, and style. My favorite rule from him is the adverb is not your friend because adverbs do tend to tell and not show. So something I learned from this book is not to use them that often. My favorite section is and furthermore, part one, door shut, door open. And this section of the book actually shows a first draft of a story that Stephen King wrote, and it shows his own handwritten ed edits on this story. And I loved seeing this 
glimpse into his own thought process, I think you'll enjoy it too. This book is The Art of X-Ray Reading, How the Secrets of 25 Great Works of Literature Will Improve Your Writing by Roy Peter Clark. If I had to choose a favorite among these books, this would be my favorite. This book changed my life, and if you've seen any of my annotation or close reading videos in the past and you thought those were intense, you should read this book because it brings close reading to another level completely. So in this book, there are multiple chapters that discuss a specific book or work through the author's x-ray lens. And there are writing lessons at the end of each chapter that you can apply to your own work. At the end, there's a section of great quotes from literature with brief analysis too. I'm going to give you a couple of examples of analysis that are included throughout the book. The author analyzes the symbolism of ferry boats and the famous green light in The Great Gatsby. He showed me so much that I never even considered by paralleling this book to Greek mythology and just other works. And as someone who has read The Great Gatsby multiple times, I was shocked by how much I learned from reading this chapter. The author talks about the use of syntax in Macbeth. For example, why did Shakespeare write, the queen, my lord, is dead, as opposed to saying, my lord, the queen is dead, or the queen is dead, my lord. And those phrases might sound all really similar, but if you read this book, he will, the author will tell you how intentional that arrangement of words actually was. He discusses imagery of birds and bees and their eyes were watching God. He talks about how MFK Fisher made recipes really interesting in how to cook a wolf. And he also exposes hidden clues that are planted in certain short stories, such as Flannery O'Connor's A Good Man is Hard to Find. So he talks about how characters' names and the motif of a tomb are included throughout the book to foreshadow the tragic ending of this story and I really loved learning about it personally, just as an avid reader and a fan of all of these authors myself. This book is The Elements of Style by William Strunk Jr. and E.B. White. It's known as a famous must read for all, all writers and I really learned a lot from this book. It was written in 1918. I know that was a while ago, but it was updated by E.B. White in 1959. You might know E.B. White as the author of Charlotte's Web and some other timeless classics. And this is a short guidebook on grammar, style, and composition with exercises that you can use to practice on your own. It is really short, the shortest book of all of the ones that I've mentioned here, and it gives us specific rules that we must know in order to write as effectively as possible. For example, if a parenthetic expression is preceded by a conjunction, place the first comma before the conjunction, not after it. So you would write this sentence like this. He saw us coming, and unaware that we had learned of his treachery, greeted us with a smile. As you can see here, there are commas before the word and, and after the word treachery, but some people tend to put the comma after and, or somewhere else. So this book debunks any myths that there might be out there about the comma. The book also tells us not to join independent clauses by a comma, which is known as the comma splice tells us to use active voice and positive assertions rather than negative ones, and it tells us to omit needless words, which is a very concise rule, and it seems like a no-brainer, but most of us break this rule on a daily basis. And this book also tells us how to structure a paragraph in paper. What I loved is that it actually includes a whole paragraph, and later describes the purpose of every single sentence in this paragraph, which I think is a great exercise, especially if you want to do it on your own. This next title is On Writing Well, The Classic Guide to Writing Nonfiction by William Zinser. This book includes guidelines for style and organization, along with chapters on how to write different types of nonfiction, including writing related to business, travel, memoirs, sports, and humor, 
It's also really useful if you want to write academic papers or essays. Some interesting tidbits I learned from this book were to avoid most adverbs, adjectives, and qualifiers. As someone who personally over-describes things in her writing, I found this advice very helpful and it's helped me become more concise when I'm writing. The author has a unique technique, which is to put brackets around superfluous phrases in writing. So he did this when he was a teacher. He would bracket students writing when he was editing their papers. And the reason why he put brackets around words instead of crossing them out is because he wanted students to make the decision on their own whether to cut a word or phrase or not. And I think this technique is really helpful to do on your own. You don't have to wait for a teacher to do it, but rather if you do this on your own before submitting a paper, it will help a lot. He explains about the, the he explains the time he helped a school principal improve the school administration's writing by cutting out jargon and adding personality to these emails or letters that were going out to students and parents. And I liked this anecdote because a lot of business writing or school writing tend to be really formal and very unnatural, but the author tells us that it's okay to use our own voices, even in nonfiction. My favorite quote from this book is the following, but on the question of who you're writing for, don't be eager to please. If you consciously write for a teacher or for an editor, you'll end up writing, not writing for anybody. If you write for yourself, you'll reach the people you want to write for. In the comments below, let me know if you'd like me to do another book review in the future. And once you've read any of these books, tell me what you thought about them. Also, if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the bell to receive notifications whenever I make a new video, and I'll see you next time.